we'll sit on the fence, we'll have splinters in our arse, and we'll not make a decision, we'll fall on the side that wins. Leaseholds will be abolished within 100 days of an incoming Labour government. That's their promise. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into what all that means and some of the pros and cons and can of worms that might be opened. As usual, I'm joined by Andrew Roberts to discuss all this. How are you doing? Hi, Ranjan. Fabulous today, actually. Really great topic. This one is amazing. I mean, it's in the King's speech. Conservatives plan to bring it in. But, oh my God, it's a ticking time bomb. Well, there are lots of issues that we need to unpick on this one. But first, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. We put out plenty of content each and every week. And to keep informed, you've got to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Also, smash that like button and tell us how you're affected by this in the comments below. Now, leaseholds have been a bit of an odd thing because in the UK, uh, it's pretty much unique in terms of all the countries in the world in how things are done. The whole concept of a 99 year lease and it ticking down and then at the end of the 99 years it hands back to the freeholder really? is, uh, is a bit balmy. Um, and there have been lots of abuses with service charges, Ground basically kickbacks, commissions yeah, yeah. on works being done and works being overcomplicated, lots of admin fees and management charges being thrown in yeah. and basically it can cost more to maintain a two bedroom flat than it can do to maintain a four bedroom house in suburbia if you have that freehold. Absolutely, I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things where it's a pig's pickle and unless you understand leaseholds, avoid them like the plague, unless you have a share of the freehold uh, on the flat. I mean, the, the interesting thing is there was legislation passed to basically say no ground rents from 2023. And what this new act is to do with it is five particular areas. But what's interesting is a number of professional entities have cast an opinion on what is proposed. We've got Catherine Callahan, KC, King's Council, and she's basically said that the proposals to change them would be a violation of a freeholder's human rights and could be overturned in court. Therefore, whatever legislation comes in would be overturned. Well, let's just look at what has actually happened because the Conservatives have done a few things. First of all, they've abolished ground rents on new leases. Um, and of course, new lease extensions are going to be a thousand years. So they've done a, one or two things. But this is, I think the, the crux of the issue is taking away property from someone without compensation yes. and giving it to someone Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Which, this is a democracy, this is a capitalist system, this is not the Bolsheviks, this is not the 19, whatever it is, 14, Russia. Absolutely. Uh, communism and confiscation of property and all of that. Because ultimately, if you, do, if you are the freeholder and, there is, and you bought a flat, and it's subject to a 50-year lease. The freeholder has some of the value of that flat, and the leaseholder has some of the value of that flat. And you can't rob the freeholder of their value and give it to, the, to someone well, else. I think it's important here, and if I pose you the question, for the audience's benefit, describe the difference between the freeholder and the leaseholder on a flat. Because to me, it's very simple. The leaseholder has the right to enjoy the internal four walls. Yes, yes. The freeholder owns the building, owns the land, owns the outside. Yes. Therefore, it's effectively like an AST, but one exactly. for 99 years that you can well, sell that's what on. the lease is. It's the right to use that space for a, um, a, a, a duration of time. The freeholder owns the underlying land. So there's two sets of value. But I think it, what is unclear from Labour's proposals is fine for brand new leasehold flats yeah. to have something like common hold and insist on that. And I think there is something called common hold at the moment. Yep. But I think what's happened is that new developers are not really keen on giving new flats as common hold because it just strips them of a source of profit. If I develop 10 flats, 
I sell off the leases for each flat and then I'm left with the freehold which has the right to charge ground rent on each of the leasehold flats and also collect a service charge. So that freehold is then worth something which I can sell on to someone yeah. in addition to selling off the, the flats. So that's why common hold, although it was introduced in the early 1990s, has had low take up among developers. But I think what they're talking about is forcing that. No. Well, the, they are effectively forcing that through with the fact that ground rents will be capped at 0.1% on new leases, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maximum £250. So basically, the ground rent is, is now capped. They're doing away with the ground rents that rose by a percentage each year because that was deemed in 20 years' time it could be doubling or more than doubling the ground rent. So what they're saying is you can't renew or increase ground rent more than once every 20 years now, which is actually stripping away some of the value that the freeholder has. Are you struggling to find your next commercial to residential conversion project? Well, over the next two years, virtually every UK bank branch will close. Banks are fabulous buildings in prime locations and thanks to permitted development rights they're really easy to convert to alternative uses under a light touch planning regime. My team have put together a list of over 500 UK bank branches which are poised for imminent closure. And for a limited period only you can download this list absolutely free. Your next commercial property project is on this list so download it now and enjoy the rest of the video. Well, to be so, fair, uh, I mean, this has been, by the way, if you, tell us if you've had any problems with leaseholds in the comments below, also smash that like button. I think the, the problems with leaseholds have been, in, in more recent times, freeholders have got a little bit too overzealous with what they can charge. Yeah. And that actually, if you are getting a mortgage on a leasehold flat, the mortgage company will have something to say if your ground rent terms are unfair of particular note is terms where it doubles every 10 years. Those sort of leasehold flats are pretty much unmortgageable with most lenders. Absolutely. Well, I think what we need to look at here is some of the, there's five proposed changes and one of them I do agree with. I think one of them will be a benefit and four of them I'm not so convinced are in the benefit of the freeholders interest. Mm. Go on, let's go through them. So let's go through them. Uh, uh, number five, allowing extension of the lease to 990 years. Yeah. Now, at the moment, the rules say when you renew, you can renew and extend the lease by 90 years. Mm. So if you've got 75 years, you would pay to increase that lease length for an extra 90 years, so you'd end up with 175 years. Now, the thing is, if you're the freeholder, at the moment, you know, in 175 years' time, somebody in your succession line as the freeholder will benefit from another income stream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if it's got to wait 990 years, that is probably 15 generations down the line before another dollar comes into the till. Well, there is increased life expectancy and you can sleep in an oxygen tank and maybe live that long. But and yeah, we are trying <laughs> cryogenics. We've already subscribed before you ask. What are the other four proposals? Buying out the ground rent when you extend the lease term. Yeah. Now, this bit, I suppose, could be reasonably fair, but they're talking about capping out the amount of money you pay mm -hmm. to buy out the ground rate. And so when you extend the lease term, you will have no longer or just peppercorn ground rent effectively, but you will pay a fixed sum. Yeah. Possibly yeah. £250 or 0.1% of, of the value of the flat. So once you've done that, you'll no longer pay a ground rent. So again, it's taking away an income stream and taking away value from that freehold, which is where Catherine Callaghan and the Housing Communities and Local Government Committee both said, yeah, I think we're going to struggle to get this one through. On the other side of it, the Law Commission wrote 322 pages, as they would, a nice concise document, and they didn't put a single recommendation at the end of it as to what 
would be fair, what would be reasonable, whether freeholders will win, leaseholders will win, or what the government should do. Mm -hmm. A typical lawyer draft, which is, we'll sit on the fence, we'll have splinters in our arse, and we'll not make a decision, we'll fall on the side that wins. Sorry, I'm, I'm, if you're a lawyer out there, comment, is that the sort of thing that lawyers do, or am I being unfair to lawyers? <laughs> So capping ground rents at 0.1% is one of the proposals. Yeah. Abolishing marriage value. So now for, that is the big That's the big elephant issue. in the room. That's the big issue. And I don't think they're going to get that through, quite frankly. Tell us what you think in the comments below. Also, join us at our next Baker Street Property Meet. We meet each and every month, the largest networking event in the UK, where you can meet up with 300 plus passionate property investors. Book your place at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com. Marriage value is basically if a lease is 50 years left, um, then the freeholder has some value attached to the freehold simply because they're going to get it back sometime. Well, it's effectively a, a law of diminishing returns. The value of that lease is transferring to the freeholder with every mm. day that uh, passes. Now, it, the value of that increases because when the lease is renewed, effectively the freeholder gets half of the increase in value back onto their side of the fence. Now that to me is taking away value that that leasehold has to the freeholder. So again, as an investment strategy that some people follow, buying freeholds of blocks, if this comes in, you will lose a significant value off your portfolio. I think, um what is likely to happen, and I'll stick my neck out here, I think in the north part of England, uh, particularly in coal mining areas, there, is, there are quite a lot of houses which are on leasehold. And I do see if it's basically a house, but it's, it's a lease, that could easily be done away with without yeah. much you know, loss here and there. But I think where you've got existing leases, which are particularly short, uh, I don't see any real benefit in, say, if someone has a 20-year lease left on a flat in Chelsea, robbing the freeholder of that value and yeah. just giving it to the leaseholder. Absolutely. It doesn't have any benefit and it is also completely illegal from any, you know, in a capitalist system we have rule of law, we have rule of property ownership. And that would also affect a lot of confidence in the rule of law and an incoming Labour government. They might but it might be in there de facto for the future, because if all leases are 1,000 years, it kicks the can considerably down the road. Yeah. Normally, politicians kick the can down the road to the next election cycle, but 1,000 <laughs> years is uh, a long way to kick the can down the road. Will we be a democracy at that point, or, or a communist society? I don't know. Comments below on that one. Anyway. <laughs> The, I, I do agree with you, but the thing I do think, the fifth thing, which I do think will be implemented, is using a prescribed formula to calculate the extension of the lease value and the ground rent. At the moment, the system, to sort of explain, is the freeholder has a value, you have a valuer, and the two valuers bang heads and argue it out. It causes a lot of cost, a lot of delay, and the only winner is the valuers and the solicitors, not uh, you. Yeah. Th this now, is, I think having a prescribed formula, which is transparent, upfront, puts this into a, an arena where you know what you're buying as a leaseholder upfront, and as a freeholder, you know what you're going to get and when you will get it. I think it's going to be tough. I mean, there are, if you go on to leaseholder.org, there are formulas that hmm. exist for calculating those values. Yeah. But they are very averaged and they don't really take into account higher value areas, London and South East and the like. And they, they don't really take into account uh, because I sit on the freeholder side of the fence. We have um, freeholds, we have leaseholders coming to us asking to extend their lease and all this sort of stuff and even buy the freehold from us. So, but when you have those valuations, there are all sorts of things that can, can be taken into account. Absolutely. Um, for example, if you're on the top floor flat, who has the roof? If the landlord owns the roof space and therefore the potential to make a roof extension, that is of significant 
value, value, which should be paid for. So there are all sorts of issues which, are, which make the property so individual that a formulaic approach can be mm. basically a massive loss of value for one party. Yeah, well, a, a lot of valuers argue around the, a percentage which, through a case law stillage, I think it was from the top of my mind, it basically arbitrated and said 5% is the value that should be used. Now, some freeholders are saying it should be 4% because in a low interest environment that we've been in, mm. it was basically harming their investment. Now, if you lower the interest rate, it's the same as when you value commercial real estate, that lowering increases the value of that asset. On the other side of it, there's been cases put forward where it's been looking at 6 7%, which has significantly lowered the value that that lease renews at. Now, this is a bit of a technical debate here. I appreciate uh, you sticking with us through this. But at the end of the day, it's trying to work out whether value is fair and where the value currently resides, which as we've described, the freeholder owns the land, they own the outside walls, they're giving a right of occupation to the internal space. Yes. Now, is it fair and right that because they own this, all of a sudden, all of the value transfers to the person who has the internal space? Now, those issues haven't really been thought out, particularly by the Labour proposals, and I think they, they may do things for new stuff, but I can't see how it's going to affect the old stuff, the, the legal system and the law of property simply does not work like that. But let's turn our attention to, by the way, smash that like button, tell us what you think, also subscribe, hit the bell icon and all of that. But let's have a look at a particular strategy which has uh, worked for many people over the years, yeah. which is to buy properties with, with short, short leases, leases and then extend them. Do you think this puts that strategy on a little bit of ice at the moment with an election coming soon and all the rest of it? Do I think it puts it on ice? No, I don't. I think in some ways it actually makes it easier. One of the rules when you're trying to uh, extend a lease is you have to have owned that property for two or more years mm. before you can serve a Section 42 notice. Now, the thing is, with this proposal, one of the things is we'll get rid of waiting two years to ask to buy a share of the freehold. I think when or you, to extend your lease. So yeah. it, it's moving the boundaries. But when you buy a short lease flat, you usually get the seller to serve the notice on the landlord. Correct. Because they have lived in the place or owned the place for two years. For two years. And then they assign the benefit of that notice to you as the buyer. Yeah. But actually thinking about it, if you were to buy a, a flat on a 60-year lease, and then you were to approach the landlord about extending it, then, you know, in the offering them a deal, then they may be thinking, well, do I take the deal now? Mm. Or do I risk uncertainty of what could come in in a year's time? Well, my, my personal view on that is landlords or freeholders, sorry, will be taking offers now because all of the proposals from all of the parties that are out there basically see their value eroding. So landlords are likely to do a deal right now because it, it's likely to bag them more cash. And here's a little bit of a, an interesting thought. I mean, Britain is still a bit of a feudal society. I mean, any law has to go through the House of Lords. And many of those lords, particularly the hereditary lords, own vast swathes of freehold property. I mean, the Duke of Westminster you know, has, has got Mayfair and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. In, in, billions. In, in billions. So th that's going to represent a significant loss of their wealth. Mm -hmm. So um, will the Lords let it go through? Well, with all these things, uh, I think this is one to stay tuned. If you're not already, smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and stay tuned to this channel because we will be doing follow-up videos depending on which way this gets implemented. We'll keep you updated straight away. But I think in summary, it's better news for leaseholders. You're not yeah. having the ticking time bomb anymore. Uh, you have the right to extend by quite a considerable amount. Silly ground rent charges for really nothing are going to be a thing of the past. And I think there's going to be more rights 
to have a say over what repairs and maintenance are done to your yeah. block. You do have the, some rights and right to manage and that kind of stuff at the moment, but I think those are a little bit convoluted to implement and they need a, a certain uh, quantum of quantum. flat owners to get excited enough about it to complain and, um, and enact those rules. I think it's going to be slightly easier for, to have more control over the service charge element in the future, which is all good news because I think it's getting harder, I mean particularly as property investors, it's getting harder to own exclusively freehold properties yeah. in your portfolio, in certain higher value areas, leaseholds will, will form way part forward. of your portfolio yeah, yeah. and we need more certainty in the costs of having leasehold properties going forward. But a great tip for you, if you're looking at buying leaseholds, look for blocks where you become a share of that freehold. That way you are not subject to all of these problems that we're talking about. Exactly. Share freehold is something that we've talked about in previous videos. We'll leave a link below. Uh, catch the other videos in the Property Breaking News playlist. It keeps you up to date with what's going on. And catch Andrew and I at the next Baker Street Property Meet. You can get your tickets at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com. See you guys in the next video. The Baker Street Property Meet is the UK's largest and number one property investors networking event. The property market is going through monumental change right now and at Baker Street Property Meet we aim to keep you up to date with the latest tips and tricks and insider tactics to help you keep on top of your property investing game and succeed in these troubled economic times. The Baker Street Property Meet is fundamentally about networking because it's not what you know, it's who you know. And at Baker Street, we aim to connect you with the people to make your property journey a monumental success. There's no better place to be to further your property investment journey than the Baker Street Property Meet. So make sure you're here, you're connecting with myself and Andrew Roberts, our expert guest speakers and 300 passionate property people each and every month. See you at the next meet. Get your spot at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com.